In the next two videos, we will look at an extended example of how we can use the comparative method to reconstruct a proto-language. We will study the languages of Polynesia, languages like Samoan, Tongan, Tahitian, and Hawaiian. And we will use cognate sets from these languages to reconstruct proto-words from the proto-language um, out of which they all originated. This is the Austronesian language family, and it has a fascinating history. The original homeland of the Austronesians must have been somewhere in Taiwan, and they must have uh, left Taiwan about 5,000 years ago, and then settled on the islands of the Philippines, on the northern islands of Indonesia, and eventually, about 3,000 years ago, ended up somewhere in northern Papua New Guinea. This family, by the way, is the family that is with the widest spread on planet Earth because speakers of these languages started in Taiwan and some of them ended up in Madaga Madagascar, as you can see. And some of them ended up all the way on Easter Island on the other side of the Pacific. So they left Taiwan, they went down the Philippines, eventually found themselves in Papua New Guinea, and then about... 3,000 years ago or so, they trekked on, um, they sailed from these islands into all of the Pacific. This is what we call Polynesia. Um, the speakers of these languages must have uh, gone to Samoa and Tonga about 3,000 years ago, eventually trekked to the Marquesas Islands and islands like Tahiti, they arrived into Easter Island, Hawaii, and ultimately into New Zealand. So they used their sailing technology to explore all of this area of planet Earth. And in doing so, they eventually had some isolation between each other. The, the people on Easter Island would no longer be speaking to the people in Hawaii or to the people in New Zealand. And this provided the conditions for their languages to change gradually and become different languages. So this is a huge language family. As you can see, it includes languages like Indonesian, Tagalog from the Philippines, um, Ch uh, Chamorro from the Carolinas. And this branch here, the one that includes Maori, Hawaiian, Rapa Nui, Samoan, and Fijian, is called Polynesian. And we're going to reconstruct what the language would have sounded like in this branch here, the one that joins Maori, Hawaiian, Rapa Nui, Samoan, and the languages of this region. How can we do that? First, let's find ourselves a set of cognates. For example, all of these languages have this, uh, a word for bird that looks very similar. Manu, 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 manu. From this, we can find sound correspondences. For example, all the words begin with an M. Here, I'm using this dash to indicate that there's M and then other things. All of them have an A when it's in the middle of the word. I'm going to simplify and just have three relationships. Beginning of the word, middle of the word, end of the word. So M is M for all the languages at the beginning of the word. A is A for all of them in the middle. N is N for all of them. And U is U for all of them. Very straightforward. So all of these are the sound correspondences and they are regular sound correspondences because we always see them. What would the proto-word look like? Probably something like Manu. And then we would say that the Proto-Polynesian M became an M in Tongan, an M in Samoan, an M in Tahitian, an M in Maori, and an M in Hawaiian. Let's make things a little bit more interesting. How about this word? Tapu, 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 kapu. It means forbidden in these languages. What are the sound correspondences? First, the, fir uh, the very first sound is a T for all of them, but not all of them. Hawaiian has a K where the others have a T. So you can see T, 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 K. The P is uh, the same for all of them. All of them have P in the middle, as you can see. The vowels we've already seen before. There's an A in Tongan and the A, -A which is always A, A in Samoan, A in Tahitian, A in Maori, A in Hawaiian. So this is the same correspondence we've seen before. Likewise with U. There's an U in Tongan, which is also an U in Samoan, an U in Tahitian, an U in Maori, and an U in Hawaiian. 
Notice that this is regular because we see it in several words and in the same patterns across languages. You give it a try. What is the protoform for forbidden? Please pause the video. It's probably something like tapu. We uh, could go through the easiest path and say that, well, if most of them have a T, we can just suppose that the original one had a T that they all preserved, but that Hawaiian changed from a T to a K. So the original one was tapu, and then the first sound became a T in Tongan, an A in Tongan, a P in Tongan, and an U in Tongan. But in Hawaiian, it would be the T became a K, and then the A, P, and U stayed the same. So the protoform for all of these is tapu. And notice that once we have the protoform, we, ha we also have rules to explain what was the transformation from the protoform into the individual languages. All right, now you give it a try. These are two sets of cognates for fish, the, the noun fish, and for the verb to eat. Please take a piece of paper and try to figure out what are the sound correspondences in these words. Please pause the video. All right. The sound correspondences are probably something like this. We have an we have an e at the beginning of a word in Tongan, which is an e e e e for all of them. So it's this one. We have an a at the end of the word in Tongan, which is a a a a a in all of them. This one. We have an e if we have um, and then we have a k in the middle of the word which is a K in Tongan, but a glottal stop in Samoan, a glottal stop in Tahitian, a K in Maori, and a glottal stop in Hawaiian. It's this one. Notice that the pattern is also happens when you have the, the sound at the beginning of the word. There's a K in Tongan, a glottal stop in Samoan, and Tahitian, and Hawaiian, but a K in Maori. So what are we supposed to do here? <laughs> um, one principle that we'll use is that we'll assume that K goes on to glottal and then in general stops going to glottal because we've seen this process in other languages. For example, in English, we have stops transforming into glottal sounds, like in bottle, for example. So many languages have this process, so we will assume it here as well. We will say that the protoform had a K, so it's e, they are Ika, and kai, and that then in Samoan, for example, the k glottalized and became a glottal stop, ia. Likewise, kai uh, had uh, a glottalization of the first sound and went from kai to ai in Samoan in all of these languages. So you can see that sometimes the rules are about, oh, let's find the simplest transformation, but sometimes the rules resemble other sound changes we've seen in the languages of the world. All right, so these are all of the correspondences that we found so far. And the, this is another set of cognates for Proto-Polynesian. Uh, keri, eli, eri, keri, and eri for to dig. Could you tell us what is the protoform for dig? I'm sorry, just one protoform. <laughs> Um, and if you see new correspondences, try to just say that the most frequent sound should be the base for the proto sound. Please pause the video. All right. So what did you find? You probably found some new correspondences. For example, that a in the middle of the word is a a a a a for all of them. So we're just going to reconstruct it as an a. We found that. Uh, the K, we had already seen, K goes to, you know, from Tongan is glottal stop in Samoan and glottal stop in Tahitian. And then we have this one, that L in Tongan is L in, ha in Samoan and Hawaiian, but R, like at the tap, in Tahitian and Maori. So we see L three times and the tap twice. So let's choose L as the basis for our uh, proto sound. So the proto form for dig would be Keli. And then this would be transformed into eri in Tahitian. The K would glottalize and go into, go into a glottal stop. The L becomes the tap, and the vowels remain the same. From Proto-Polynesian 
into Tahitian. And you can see that each language has its own combination of changes from the protoform into the language. This is what the method is doing. We try to reconstruct forms out of cognates and then to come up with rules for how the protoform could have transformed into the words we see in the observable languages. Sometimes we use the Occam's razor. Uh, we try to find a simple alternative. So for example, if the if most of the languages have a T, then we choose that as the basis for the proto sound. If all the languages have an N, then we'll just have an N as the proto sound. Sometimes the rule is chosen because we've seen it in other languages. For example, we've seen languages where stops transform into glottals. So we choose to transform the proto-Polynesian one as to represent the Proto-Polynesian sound as a K, and then have it remain a K in some language and localize in others. In the next video, we'll continue to look at Proto-Polynesian.